<laughs> to me, the best part about watching a game is having an excuse to eat all those great snacks. And with the Super Bowl right around the corner, I think it's time to make some skillet nachos. You assemble all of the nacho ingredients in one pan and then warm the chips up separately. They're the ultimate chips and dip and they'll definitely get the party started. So come on, grab a skillet and I'll show you how to make this. What's up, universe? Welcome back to my kitchen. And in case you're new here, I'm Julie. I'm a chef. I'm a mom. And for this season of our show, our focus is on some easy and yummy snacks that we can actually execute and film while our son Lincoln naps. With all that said, I think it's time to make some skillet nachos. What you're going to need is olive oil, ground beef, salt and pepper, chili powder, ground cumin, ground coriander, onion, jalapeno, garlic, pinto beans, shredded Monterey Jack, shredded Chihuahua cheese, tortilla chips, tomato, pickled jalapeno slices, avocado, lime juice, fresh cilantro, and scallions. This is probably a little bit more ingredients than my recipes usually call for, but when it comes to yummy nachos, like, Come on, you just gotta do it up. It's all about those toppings, right? I'm gonna start out with an onion. Just gonna finely dice it. I just got this little scooper thing. It's kind of cool, huh? And then I have three cloves of garlic, which I just smashed to help me mince it up. Did you know that mincing garlic is my least favorite task? I have no idea why. It's kind of therapeutic, but I still don't like it. And then we have a jalapeno. If you're going to make this for kids, like for instance, um, when I tested this, I made this knowing that Lincoln was going to eat it. I omitted the jalapeno. I thought it would be too spicy. So it's up to you. Also, you can choose to seed it. Take out the pith and the seeds. That will reduce some of the heat. You know what? I'm going to maybe do half and half. Maybe this one I'll remove it and the other one I won't. Make sure you wash your hands after you touch jalapeno, especially before you touch your eyes. This is what's gonna be cooked up. So we're gonna put that on the side. Then we're gonna work on some toppings. We're gonna have two scallions, green onions. If you wanna be fancy, you could do it on a bias cut because it's just garnish. I'm gonna take some cilantro leaves. Or if you want to not even chop it, you can just pick off individual leaves of the cilantro, leave them whole. I'm just gonna do a rough chop because I kind of do like heartier pieces. Next for our garnish, I have a tomato. I'm just gonna seed it. You can just use your fingers and you just remove most of the seeds so that it's not too watery or juicy. You can use a spoon if you don't wanna be as barbaric. And then you just need to give it a quick dice. Then you need an avocado because avocados are life. This is a bit ripe, so if it's too ripe, my apologies, which is gonna work with it. Oh, not bad. I don't know what your favorite method is to cutting up an avocado, but I just like to score it inside of the shell. And we're gonna squeeze some lime juice on top for added flavor and also to help the avocado stay green. So you just use about the juice of one lime or maybe even half a lime. I might only need about a half a lime. This is very juicy. And then the last of my garnish toppings are some pickled jalapenos. So they sell these in a jar, usually in some sort of liquid. And this adds that perfect little bite that cuts through the richness of all the cheese and the toppings. So perfect. But again, if you're not a fan of heat or you're serving this to kids and you're worried, you can always keep it on the side for guests to just pick up on their own. That's it. Now we're just going to head over to the stove and assemble our skillet. You need to grab yourself any kind of oven safe pan or skillet. So I'm using my trusty cast iron skillet and I already have it preheating on the stove. 
We use about two tablespoons of olive oil. You can eyeball it. So it's already heating up nice and hot. And I have a pound of ground beef. The amount of fat you use really depends on what your preference is. I happen to be using a 90-10, so it's a little bit on the leaner side. You want to hear that sizzle. You know what I think the best part of these skillet nachos is? Is that everyone gets the amount of toppings that they want. You don't have to worry about putting the even amount of toppings on each individual nacho chip. You know how sometimes you get it at a restaurant and there's some that are super loaded and soggy and others that are naked? Not with this case. I should also mention that I'm currently preheating my oven to 400 degrees. The beef is browning nicely, so I'm just going to season with some salt and pepper. And then you got to add your spices, right? So I have two tablespoons of chili powder. And then I have a tablespoon of cumin. But dude, every time I say this, I think of Joe's voice going, human. <laughs> and then I have two teaspoons of ground coriander. If this is one of those spices that you just don't have lying around, you can omit it. You can just add a few more. You can just add like a little bit more cumin and chili powder, or you can just add fresh chopped cilantro. Cumin and coriander just go hand in hand. Oh man, and already it's starting to look like really yummy taco seasoning meat, right? So we're letting those spices cook off for about a minute. Let them come alive in that oil. And then we're gonna add in our aromatics. So that is our finely diced onion, three cloves of garlic, and jalapeno. And then we're just gonna cook this for about three minutes until the vegetables soften. With every layer, I do like to add a little bit more salt, so I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle that. I feel like I'm gonna get some smack from some of my East Coast friends for wearing this t-shirt because, you know, I am a Philly girl originally, but we're here in Chicago now. This is where our son Lincoln is born and being raised, and my husband Joe is a Bears fan, but it is kind of sad what happened because we watched a game on the East Coast and we were amongst all the Eagles fans and uh, the Bears lost and it was very tragic to watch Joe. He even scared Lincoln because he was like yelling and crying so loud. <laughs> oh man, I wish there was smell o vision I know people say that all the time, but for real, this would make you go to the market and buy the ingredients right now. And at this point, I'm gonna add some water. I didn't add this in my ingredients board, but you just need a half cup of water. I'm just gonna pour that in. It just kind of somehow allows all those spices and aromatics to meld together. So I have a can of pinto beans, and this is about a 15 ounce can. And all I did was just drain the liquid from it. So I'm gonna add that. Give this about a minute. After that, you're just gonna give it a taste just to make sure your seasonings are on point. Now I'm just gonna grab some tortilla chips, and I'm just using store-bought, but you could go homemade if you want. And I'm just gonna pop them into the oven. So. Again, set at 400 and you're just gonna watch it. Give it just a few minutes. I think a little bit more salt. So while the chips are being toasted in the oven, I'm just gonna kind of spread this into one layer, turn the heat off. And honestly, the heat of the bubbling mixture will probably start your melting process of your cheese. So just do this when you're ready to go. If you're waiting for guests to arrive, just leave it like this and maybe even heat it up a little bit before you serve it to your guests. Top it with cheese later, right when you're about to serve. I have a cup or about four ounces of Monterey Jack. We're just gonna put that all over on top. I mean, and this is what makes nachos nachos, right? And then I have a cup of Chihuahua cheese. So it's kind of like Mexican quesadilla cheese. And if you don't have it or you don't want to use it, you can use something like a mild cheddar. But I'm going for kind of like a white cheese look today. You can actually pop this under the broiler since it's all heated through anyway. It's hot, it's cooked, and all you want to do is melt the cheese. I just kind of don't want the cheese to get too hard and crunchy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like when it melts a little too much so you just keep an eye on it and as long as it's melted it's done and then we're gonna pull it out garnish with all those toppings that we prepared and then just serve it right away
I put this cloth on the handle to indicate that it's hot like they do at the restaurants. Mm -hmm. So you might want to do that too if you plan on serving the skillet right on the table for your guests. Caution them that it's hot. But you know what? Because we did our photo shoot and everything like that, the cheese is not going to be as gooey for this shot. I'm sorry about that. Oh, how sad. I know. But it's still going to taste good. And the good thing about this serving nachos this way is that it does stay warmer, I think, a lot longer than if you were to just put it right on the chips. Oh, look at this. Well, at least it did the cheese pull there. Wow, oh, that's just perfect. Like, perfect nachos. You think so? Mm. Oh, so delicious. But I love the flavor, the Monterey Jack and the mm. Chihuahua cheese. That's like a nice, creamy, mild flavor. It doesn't overpower the rest of the flavors with too much cheese. Um, what do you think about the jalapenos on top? So that was what I was going to mention, is the jalapeno has a nice little kick to it. Mm -hmm. And I really like, that's part of like being having nachos, is having that kick. Yeah. So I left a little lime in here if you wanted to squeeze some lime on top. I think that will add a nice little sharp flavor, a zing. But you know the best part of this is that you can keep all the toppings separately if you wanted to. If you just wanted to stop with the melted cheese on top, leave it a blank slate for your guests, and then just have all the individual toppings and bowls on the side, you can make yourself a little nacho bar. I find that this is the best way to keep your chips not soggy, mm -hmm. not weighed down by the toppings, and the topping itself stays hotter longer, and you can customize it. Yeah, look at that cheese. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe it's still um, hot like this after our photo shoot. I think that's the beauty of a cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. For substitutions, you could always customize whatever you want. Like if you wanted to make it a little leaner, you could do ground turkey. And beans, you can mix it up with just kidney beans, um, black beans. You can try adding some corn. I mean, really there's no wrong way to do it. It just melts nicely, it's convenient, it's communal. And I think it's just fun for a game. It's, I think it's a perfect dish. Like I said before, it's the ultimate chips and dip. If you enjoyed watching this, remember to let us know by pushing like, Leave a comment down below and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit that bell for notifications so that you know every time we post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. And go Bears next year. <laughs> next not, year. Not this year, but next year. <laughs> Ooh, this one's bad. I only have one more. We'll see what happens. You can make yourself a little nacho bar. <coughs> God bless you. Sorry. <laughs> Too much pepper. It was coming out and I was <laughs> trying to hold it in. <laughs> so that's what I was gonna mention. <clears throat> so that was what I was gonna mention. So that was what I was gonna. <laughs>